fifth time back to Vietnam since 66. They arrived in this faraway land more than 50 years ago. I wasn't sure if I really wanted to, to come back. I've lived with these ghosts for 54 years. It changes you forever. Brave young men. They were trying to kill us. They were trying to kill me. Fighting for love of country and each other. That's why it hurts so bad. Jebel B. Evans, Junction City, Kansas. That's why it hurts when you lose people that you trained with, that you grew up with in the Army. Matthews Shelton, Cincinnati, Ohio. And, and, and they're taken away from you in, 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 in a horrific, horrific way. William A. Farrell, Stanton, Tennessee. Suckered a violent firefight in this remote valley. The most memorable thing was simply being shot at. Ambushed. They watched more than 200 friends die. My first thing I did was feel my chest and see if I had it. My heart was pumping, and it was all right, and I could breathe, so I knew I wasn't dead. Haunting memories unfaded for half a century. We four survivors of the Adrang Valley are here today in this country of Vietnam to say goodbye to those who fell and honor their memories. They left Vietnam. I've never talked to anybody like this before. But it never left them. There are nightmares, more than one. Now, for the first time, these U.S. veterans make their emotional return. All these years of, of denial, and, and all of a sudden, you know, there's no escape. Changed men. I'm looking for closure. In a changed country. Fifty years ago, there was a Vietnam that, uh, that we knew then. You're coming back now, I see the changes and the difference in the people. It's good to come back. Their story inspired a best-selling book and a Hollywood movie. Because all of us wonder why we're still alive. And their bravery inspires to this day. We, as Americans, had something in us that allowed us to prevail. Speeding up the Saigon River in the beating heart of Vietnam's largest city. This is the last place these men expected to find themselves more than five decades after their first visit here. Today it's, it's a whole different place, different people. I went here on R&R &R, and so I'm kind of looking for familiar sites. First time back since 1966. The Vietnam of today lined with skyscrapers, filled with scooters, booming with young people. 70% of this country's population wasn't even alive yet when the war was being waged. I would think that the young people today uh, don't really comprehend what happened in, in the Vietnam conflict. Uh, and, and I don't know that they're terribly interested, and that's okay, that's okay. The more we, the more we can forget war as people, then the better off we'll be as a world. Now I'm gonna crawl through the other side. Today, tourist attractions are some of the only reminders of war. Delay now. I just gotta figure out how to... You have to be careful, what? Places where you can squeeze into tunnels used by the Viet Cong during the Tet Offensive. How was that? That was freaky. <laughs> what you had, what you had? or squeeze off the kind of rapid-fire rounds soldiers did five decades ago. There you go. <laughs> and there are museums, where the spoils of a devastating war are all on full display. I can't tell you how many run, but that's the airplane right there. But for these men, the war that, to many, seems so distant in both time and geography has never seemed quite this close. Especially when they walk into a room filled with their former foes. I'm from Massachusetts and Cape Cod and the other side of the pond over there. Handshakes instead of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Thank you. Smiles and photos instead of gunfire. This is a far cry from their first time here. Uh, out of the 
28 of us that came here together, 18 were killed that first month. These are the men of the 7th Cavalry. John Cahill, B Company, 2nd to 7th Cavalry, 1st Cavalry Division, LZ X-Ray. Specialist Robert Jones, 2nd Battalion, 7th Regiment of the 1st Cavalry Division in LZ X-Ray in LZ Albany. Lieutenant Bud Alley, 2nd uh, Battalion, 7th Cavalry, Headquarters Company, Combo Officer, LZ X-Ray, LZ Albany. Jim Lawrence, Executive Officer, Delta Company, 2nd Battalion, 7th Cavalry, Landing Zone, X-Ray, Landing Zone, Albany. Survivors of one of the bloodiest battles any one unit ever suffered during the entire Vietnam War. Yeah, we're here. At this point, uh, we're here. They've been brought back to the very spot where their friends and fellow soldiers fell. A lot of curiosity, a lot of, uh, you know, seeing if I could locate the position I was in. The remote Ai Drang Valley in Vietnam's Central Highlands. Site of the devastating not. battle of Idrang. And you're not even worried about getting shot at right now. The battle of the Idrang Valley consisted of two locations. Uh, landing zone X-ray. Second Battalion, Seventh Cav went in and replaced the first of the seventh on X-ray, and then we moved overland uh, to landing zone Albany. We look like we have a good trail here to get us through. We come to the trees over there. You recognize it. 450 U.S. soldiers dropped by helicopter unaware that 2,000 enemy troops lie in wait. The LZ is to the right. On this return trip, with the help of the Greatest Generations Foundation, a charity that returns soldiers to the battlefields where they served, and David Moore. Every time they came in, they came in in the nick of time. Son of Hal Moore, the man who commanded these forces all those years ago, these guys are able to locate the exact spot of the first it's attack. It's a lot of memories, though. You can see uh, there is change. Their story was first made famous by war correspondent Joe Galloway in the book, We Were Soldiers Once and Young. Mel Gibson made a movie, We Were Soldiers, about what happened here. But even Hollywood couldn't capture the scale of the carnage. Throughout the night, uh, there was firefights. Uh, there was yelling, there was screaming, somebody was being killed. It was the first major battle between U.S. and North Vietnamese forces, and the next day, it got even worse. We walked into an ambush. We allowed uh, the North Vietnamese, who just happened to be uh, camped on the banks of the Adrang River, to deploy in front of us and down our right flank. And uh, they sprang the ambush on November the 17th, 1965 at about 1 or 1.15 in the afternoon. A 16-hour battle ensued. The enemy shooting from just feet away. It was a North Vietnamese soldier but about eight feet from me. Maybe I shot him. By the time the three-day battle of Ai Drang was over, a shocking 234 U.S. soldiers were killed and 245 were wounded. Still, the U.S. was able to claim victory by killing or wounding a staggering 1,200 North Vietnamese soldiers. In the battle itself, I know I shot and killed one man. He was charging me directly. If I didn't shoot him, uh, he was going to get me. And there's the tragedy of war. This was a man, probably had a father and a mother back in Hanoi. He may have had a wife. He may have had children. And I took his life. I took his life. And that's been a burden on me all of my life. Now, am I correct? The tragedy of war is one reason they came back here, to confront what they call the ghosts that have haunted them for 54 years. Bud Alley's ghost. Having Garrett Lee die in my arms, that's the face. That's the face I see every night when I go to sleep. He was a clerk. He had about 10 days left in the Army. Good, good guy, big guy. He was about 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, I tried to pick him up, tried to carry him. He was hurting so bad and so covered in blood. It, he just screamed. And I tried to drag him. I said, can you hold my shirt and let me straddle your body and try to drag you? And uh, he'd pass out. 
he'd go six inches and he'd pass out and screaming. And finally it was just, he couldn't go anymore, I couldn't go anymore. I mean, I just was, that was it. Bud and the others have journeyed 8,000 miles and waited 54 years to prove they still remember. I can almost hear them saying, thank you. You haven't forgotten. You remember us? The unforgettable men. These are the names of the men of Alpha Company, second and the seventh. From an unforgettable battle. Hendry T. Luna, Fresno, California. Who died in this unforgettable place. God bless them all. God bless their families. Never forget their names. Thanks, guys. Walking into a hollowed ground where the war dead are buried is a humbling experience. So From the yeah, government. This is a military. This, yeah. this would be a military like, like Arlington. Even if those interred here fought on the other side. Some, they uh, would not get the bones, but they could get like some the meadows where they put the names and their uh, crew. The U.S. lost 234 Americans in the Battle of Ai Drang a number that actually pales compared to the Vietnamese losses. And while the U.S. lost more than 58,000 service members as a result of the entire war, more than a million North Vietnamese and Viet Cong fighters were killed. And I didn't know anything like this existed. You'll find crowded cemeteries like this throughout Vietnam. I haven't seen one of these before, so it's, uh, I don't know. it's interesting to see how they honor their dead. I still can't interpret the... Can't either, and I don't know what that says. They said, your country honors you. These cemeteries, a sobering reminder of the more than three million people, including civilians, who died during the war. Yeah, it's nice to see them honor their, their dead and, and the sacrifice of, of their soldiers. And it goes back to what we've talked about before, that uh, war is a horrific thing, and uh, uh, both sides suffer when there's a war. Yeah, well, you see... It could, in a, in a setting such as this, you, you get a sense, like any other national cemetery, you get a sense of magnitude, of, of pain and loss and sacrifice. And again, you wonder if there are better ways besides killing each other to figure things out. And if we'll ever figure that out, probably not. No. Nope. Welcome back as we return to Vietnam with the soldiers of the 7th Cavalry. 54 years ago, they barely made it out alive from a battle that killed more than 230 American soldiers. But not all memories they left behind here in Vietnam were bad ones. They also left behind some friends. Bob Jones made friends with this man, the interpreter used by his battalion during the war. I had written his address down, which I gave to them. And I had held it in my wallet for years. Finally took it out, and I put it in my desk, and I said that if I ever get back to Saigon, I'm going to look them up. The Greatest Generations Foundation tracked down that address in the middle of Saigon in hopes of a reunion 54 years later. So here we are today. We'll see what the news is. Is he here? No, man, I'm sorry because uh this man, maybe he sold the house for a long time ago, okay? It wasn't to be. The current owner has lived here for 25 years. Bob's old friend is long gone. I don't think that, you know, it's a needle in a haystack, you know, needle in a haystack. Just to know that he may be alive is, is, is well worth that. I think that. Uh, always he, he's alive. I'm it's sorry. A, it, at least I've fulfilled my commitment. This trip has brought back memories of old friendships, 
and its forged new ones. Over home cooked dinners with locals. Over dancing and song. Two different cultures, thrust together by war so many years ago. And reunited in peace. You know, if we could have our way in an ideal world, there would be no more war. We came over this, this country to fight people we didn't know and had no reason to hate them. Maybe that's the message. No, we can find peace in ways we don't understand. For the men of the 7th Cavalry who fought in the Ai Drang Valley, this return trip to Vietnam is now over. So that's part of my closure, is getting 1965 and 66 Vietnam out of my head and thinking about Vietnam in the present. That's exciting. 54 years later, this country has changed them once again. November 17, 1965. They gather one last time for an emotional dinner and some words from that book that made their story famous. Joe Galloway's We Were Soldiers Once and Young. The class of 1965 came out of the old America, a nation that disappeared forever in the smoke that billowed off the jungle battlegrounds where we fought and bled. The country that sent us off to war was not there to welcome us home. It no longer existed. We answered the call of one president who was now dead. We followed the orders of another who was hounded from office and haunted by the war he mismanaged so badly. Many of our countrymen came to hate the war we fought. Those who hated it the most, the professionally sensitive, were not, in the end, sensitive enough to differentiate between the war and the soldiers who had been ordered to fight it. They hated us as well. And we went to ground in the crossfire, as we had learned in the jungles. In time, our battles were forgotten. Our sacrifices were discounted. And both our sanity and our suitability for life in polite American society were publicly questioned. Our young, old faces chiseled and gaunt from the fever and heat and the sleepless nights now stare back at us, lost and damned strangers, frozen in yellowing snapshots packed away in cardboard boxes with our medals and ribbons. We rebuilt our lives found jobs or professions, married, raised families, and waited patiently for America to come to its senses. As the years passed, we searched each other out and found that half-hearted remembered pride of service was shared by those who had shared everything else with us. With them and only with them could we talk about what had really happened over there what we had seen, what we had done, and what we had survived. We knew what Vietnam had been like and how we looked and acted and talked and smelled. No one in America did. Hollywood got it wrong almost every time. We did twisting political knives on the bones of our dead brothers. So once, just this once, this is how it all began, what it was really like, what it meant to us, and what we meant to each other. It was no movie. When it was over, the dead did not get up and dust themselves off and walk away. The wounded did not wash away the red and go on with life unhurt. Those who were miraculously unscratched were by no means untouched. Not one of us left Vietnam the same young man he was when he arrived, for we were soldiers once.